right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is the Thursday. The Thursday? Which means that it is vlog day. I don't know why I said the Thursday, but as usual, I got an action-packed full vlog for you. We're going to be drinking some beer. We're going to be doing shout-outs, viewer mail, first impressions, retro vaping, some advocacy stuff, and a very heartwarming story uh, that I have prepared. Uh, there's a lot to, There's a lot going on, and I'm just in a, you know... I, I'm just in a weird mood today, and I have no idea why. There's just a lot of stuff going on. I'm I'm stressing out about organizing VaporCon West. Uh, trying to deal with vendors regarding VaporCon West can be a little, uh, you know, uh, stressful sometimes. I've got work backing up. I mean, as far as like mods and this, that, and the other, and I've got life just happening, and it's it's stressful. I'm in a little bit of a stressed mood. I'm hoping that some vaping and some beer will help calm me down a bit. Let me get out my vlog notes. That should be the first thing that I always do is get out my vlog notes. So, first things first. YouTube, for some reason, has decided to change the way that I can reply to comments. And this is a new change just within the last couple days. And the funny thing is, on the viewer's end, nothing changes. The only thing that has changed is on my end. So once upon a time, and if you have a YouTube account, you can follow along with me. Once upon a time, I could click on my little head and I could click on the Creator Studio. This is kind of like the back end of everything that's a part of your YouTube channel. And you go over here to this side and you click Community. And when you click that tab, it brought up all the new comments on all of your videos. And you can just reply, reply, go down, reply, go down, reply, and it was a great system. Now, it brings up the top comments on all your videos. So every time I click this tab, I see the same stuff over and over again. I see this guy posted this a week ago. I don't get all the hype about pre-built coils. There are many good rebuildable RTAs around. Why should I use these expensive coils? Wouldn't it be great if you would review some rebuildable RTAs in the future? I've been looking at this comment for a week. There are 13 replies to it, including myself. It always pops up first because over the last whatever, all my videos, that's one of the more popular comments and it comes up first. So in order for me to reply to people now, I have to go over to this new little tab and click on a particular video of comments that I want to view. So let's look at my last vlog and it brings up the top comments again, which is mine. I don't need to see my comment that says go to kasa.org and support HR 2058, which I hope you all did. I have to click another tab and go to the newest first. And now I can see the newest comments from the vlog after all that. But if I want to see something else, if I want to go to the Tendu mech mod video, I click on that and then it brings up the top comments again. So then I click over here and I bring up the newest first so that I can reply to people on that video. And you're saying, Nick, that doesn't seem like a very impossible process. And it's not. But what this does is when it makes it impossible for me to see older videos. I reply to a lot of comments. If someone goes back like a year ago and makes a comment on some video, I can see it and reply to it in the old system. In this, I cannot. I don't know if someone went back to my, uh, you know, taking the next vaping step uh, volume three video and commented on it. With this system, I have no way to see those comments. It only goes back so far. So I upload four videos a week. So right now I can see my last three, okay. There's that, there's the Aspire Atlantis, the Nami RDA, the Tendu, my last vlog, the Torch Woodworks, it goes back. I can see as far back as my Ego One video and that's it. I can't see any comments before that. I just can't physically see them. The system does not allow me to do that and that makes me very, very upset. So I apologize, I apologize if you went and commented on an older video. Uh, I just straight up do not see it um, on my YouTube uh, on my YouTube community tab, and it it's driving me insane. And like I have to go through every single video now, every single day, and see if there's new comments on there. Whereas before it was just one page, and it would show me the comment, and then the video it was on, and then the comment, and then the video it was on. 
It doesn't do that anymore. So let's go to the Petri mod that I did. Okay, it's gonna load the top comments first, like it does now. And then if I go to newest first, there you go. I never knew this existed. Two days ago, someone commented and said, where can I get separate parts like if I just wanted the switcher button? I had no idea this comment existed because I just now randomly clicked on the Petri Mech Mod video and saw his comment. Let's go to the iStick 30 watt, 50 watt. It's gonna bring up the top comments first, then I click to newest first. Yep, same thing. 11 hours ago, no idea that this comment was made. I've had problems using my RDAs on the 30 watt specifically, my Tugboat version two. The battery jumps and so does the ohm reader. It sometimes dies at half a battery and heats up real quick. Uh, and yes, builds to the build is 0 0.6, so I was wondering if anyone else had these problems with their RDAs. Now I can reply to this guy, but I can't spend my time clicking on every video and then clicking new comments and then clicking every video and clicking new comments and clicking every video and clicking new comments. It's not conducive to my time, to the schedule that I keep. I've got a lot going on apart from VaporCon West and Namber Juice and Grim Green. There's just life happening as well. And I can't spend hours doing this. The way YouTube had it set it up before, it was really easy. I could just go to this page, knock out a fuck ton of comments and see every video that was up there and see all my comments. And now for some reason, YouTube doesn't want me to do that. There is an option to see comments from all videos, but you can't sort them from newest to oldest. You can only see the top videos when you do the all, or you can only see the top comments when you do all videos. I'm sick of ranting about YouTube, but they keep fucking me over and over and over and over. So I apologize in the future. I might not even see your comments. Uh, I go back, what I've been doing is I go back from the last like two weeks, every day I'll go back, so I'll go back like as far as the anarchist mod right now, and I'll click and see the newest first and see if anybody's commented. Okay, no one has commented on that for four days. So I'm good on that, I'm back, I'm all caught up on those comments. Smoke Tech X Pro M65, newest first, Okay, three days ago someone commented and I didn't reply to them because I didn't know that it existed. YouTube's fucking up. I hate it. I hate YouTube. I hate what they're doing. Uh, it's like they sit in a room and they figure out ways to make things more difficult for their content creators and it just drives me nuts. So with that said, I'm going to do the best I can and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Hopefully uh, YouTube fixes things. Now I'm all worked up. I need to have, I need to sit here and have a vape. But like I said, we got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Um, different mech mods, different atomizers. We're going to drink some beer. Uh, we're going to uh, do some first impressions, do some retro vaping, uh, hopefully get to some viewer mail if it doesn't take too long. First thing, uh, uh, Evan, uh, Evan wrote me on Facebook, um, and this is kind of just a uh, announcement more than anything else. He says, hey Nick, there have been somewhere in the neighborhood of eight break-ins at local vape shops here in Denver, Colorado within the last week. I work at a local shop, and while we got skipped over, I know a bunch of guys who got hit. And I was wondering if you could put the word out about large quantities of vape beer going out really, really cheap. There was probably almost $100,000 in damages and goods were taken by the same kids. And I know that we are all looking to get these guys caught. Any information anyone can provide to the police would be uh, would be greatly appreciated. So yeah, so there you go. Uh, Evan, up in uh, Colorado, evidently the Denver area, there's been, uh, wow, eight break-ins uh, in local shops within the last week. That is, uh, that is crazy. Uh, people are, I guess people are after, uh, people are after vape gear. So if you see, hear anything, uh, I guess, uh, let someone know. Let I guess let the police know if that's if that's the road you road you want to go down. Um, there's also I said I would mention this giveaway. Uh, the Juice Junkies group on Facebook, facebookcom slash groups Juice Junkies are doing a Casa donation giveaway, and I'll post a link in the description to the Juice Junkies group, or you can find this if you're so interested. Uh, it's a donation giveaway, so you donate ten dollars or more. Uh, and go in the draw to win. And the prizes are the Hell's Gate mod, uh, Samsung, two Samsung 25R batteries, 
the Ball RDA, the Luck Charger. I don't know what any of those are. 20 feet of wire, cotton bacon, uh, 120 mils of juice. Anyway, there's a whole big prize. And uh, obviously, they're going to donate all the proceeds of everybody who enters to CASA, which I think is a fantastic thing. And like I said, I'll link in the description to where uh, to where you can find that up. I also have my own giveaway winner to announce. Um, we're going to do that a little bit later. We'll do that later. Uh, you're going to have to stick around. I'm going to pepper it in somewhere so you don't know ooh, exactly where it is. Actually, I'll probably, I'll probably just wait and... and uh, and do it at the end. So yeah, um, there was one more thing. So this is something that I posted on uh, on GrimGreen.com, and this is kind of advocacy related, not super advocacy related, but it's kind of advocacy related. I just thought this was, I just thought this was interesting. I posted uh, this on GrimGreen.com with the headline that says, "Please forgive me if I'm reading this incorrectly." From what this article says, it seems that Mitch Zeller, head of the FDA, is being a bit more reasonable regarding nicotine and e-cigarettes. What? It's just one of those things where everybody knows that I vape. Uh, every person that I talk to knows that I vape. My friends and family know that I vape. And so those people, friends and family, they like to send you articles all the time. Maybe it's stuff you've already seen, but they love to send you articles. Like, oh, look what I saw on the news, this, that, and the other. <laughs> So I got a New York Times article, um, and the, the, the starts off with a quote from Mitch Zeller saying, "We need a national debate on nicotine." Anyway, the art, I, I'm just going to read this verbatim from the Grim Green site. The article talks about the tobacco wars of the 90s and Zeller's insanely successful truth campaign. The article also goes over the whole we just don't know what's in them talk that we're all used to. And then there is another quote at the end of the article from Mitch Zeller. It says. Pardon me. When nicotine is attached to smoke particles, it will kill. Okay. But if you take that same drug and put it in a patch, it is such a safe medicine that it doesn't even require a doctor's prescription. That paradox helps explain why he believes there needs to there needs to be a rethink within society on nicotine. And then this is how the article ends. It's not that Zeller believes nicotine is perfectly safe. He doesn't. Or that we should shrug our shoulders if teenagers take up vaping. He believes strongly that kids should be discouraged from using e-cigarettes. Yes, that is rational. That is reasonable. Rather, he thinks there should be a recognition that different ways of delivering nicotine also come with different risks. To acknowledge that and to grapple with its implications would be a step forward. Mitch Zeller says the issue isn't e-cigarettes, it's nicotine. It seems to me uh, like they are saying, okay, so before we rush into anything, let's have an actual open discussion of vaping and nicotine and see what's really going on. Uh, I wrote at the end of this article, I know we are trained to stand up against the FDA and Mitch Zeller, but I also think that we need to be open-minded to the idea that it is possible for the FDA and Mitch Zeller to both change their minds on the subject. Uh, very, very interesting. If you want to go over to the New York Times and read the whole thing, I'll post a link in the description uh, to this article. I just thought that was really interesting, and it's one of those things where... Before, all we were hearing from the FDA was, oh, no, we have to ban it. Oh, no, it's dangerous. Oh, no, we don't know what's in it. Oh, no, the flavors appeal to kids. Oh, no, we need to protect and ban and kids and protection and banning and flavors and kids. And now it seems like that's not what I'm hearing. What I'm hearing is Mitch Zeller going, well, maybe it's nicotine's not as bad as we thought it was. I mean, I don't want kids doing it, but depending on the delivery system, it may not be as harmful, and maybe we should kind of have an open discourse, an actual adult, grown-up conversation about nicotine. Uh, interesting, interesting stuff, interesting, interesting stuff. Um, I don't really have any other advo Cassie stuff to talk about. Uh, I do want to obviously thank everybody who entered the giveaway and told me their, their stories of vaping uh, along with, you know, uh, all the information that I had asked for it was really, 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 really helpful. Um, you know what I want to do right now? I want to do beer and then we're going to do some shout outs. Let me have a vape here first though. Everybody, everybody join with me. Let's just pause. Let's just have a vape. Mm. It's good. It just feels good, man. Oh, 
for anybody wondering, this is the IPv version 4. I've been rocking it a lot lately. Um, this is my stainless steel Aeolus atomizer, and I picked up a their competition cap up at uh, where was that VC or uh, VPX in Niagara Falls or Niagara Falls for those paying attention um, this is their competition cap it has a whole fuck ton of airflow and it's got its own built in like a uh, chuff style super wide bore uh, cap it's almost too much airflow like I find myself actually turning it down a little bit Yeah, oof. The airflow is big. Big airflow. I turn it down. I have to turn it down just a little bit. And then it's a much more enjoyable vape. IMO. But that's it. That's what I've been rocking recently uh, with some top secret juices. Uh, we're doing the last three uh, Grim Cult flavors very, very soon. And I'm sitting here with a whole mess of. Uh, a whole mess of liquid in front of me um, trying to get those last three flavors nailed down so this is the testing phase so I have at least a bajillion bottles in front of me all in different atomizers and such that I'm tasting sort of top secret uh, juices like that but uh, yeah so that's what I've been vaping let's get into this beer I know I promised a lot of people that I was going to do the Firestone uh, I'm not gonna do that this week because I'm not actually in the mood to drink a lot of beer right now like I said I've been in a weird mood so I'm hoping this this little bit of beer helps me out I could be really hungry I just ate a bowl of cereal but I could be hungry too next week maybe we'll do the Firestone this week this week is Golden Drock so this is one of my favorite beers of all all time, just all time. I just love it. Uh, this is the Golden Drock Ale, not the Golden Drock 9000. This is 10.5% uh, alcohol by volume. So it's a, uh, it's a strong little beer here. Um, I'm hoping I didn't shake it up. Uh, thankfully, uses a uh, you know a, a, a cap rather than a cork because I hate corks. I'm gonna head over to the beer advocate site real fast and read about this because I don't believe I've actually ever done this for this beer. Uh, it has a 94% rating. Uh, they say it's a Belgian strong dark ale, which I guess kind of I don't know leads me to believe that it's a quad. Um, one reviewer says, this is the beer that got me started on truly great beer. A classic, dark and delicious, multi-layered. I love it. Another person says, I had it on tap uh, as part of a Belgian sampler. Expectations were high. This has been one of my must-have list. For, this has been on my must-have list for a while. While I love a good strong ale, the color is light brown with a small cap of lightly bubbled head, aroma of malts, sweet dark fruits, raisins, plums. The taste is metallic plum fig booze. <laughs> Too sweet. A mishmash of strong booze and sweetness that alternate in every sip. The fig, fi fig flavor was far too much. Mouthfeel was smooth, at least. Probably not going to have this one again. Uh, it's funny because I taste the same things that he does. I definitely taste like the raisins, plums, figs flavor. It you do you do actually taste the booze. You taste the alcohol in this. I'm going to be pouring it into this glass. It's not a tulip glass, but it's close, of course, uh, over my keyboard as I always do. It is, uh, it is like a dark brown color. I'm going to give it a bit of an aggressive pour here at the end so Ruby Roo doesn't make fun of me. But yeah, that's the head on it right there. It's like a tan taupe head. It is a very dark beer. I mean, it's not black like motor oil. It's definitely like a, like a dark, dark, uh, dark brown woody sort of color. And it does have that. You can smell you can smell the booze on it, but it does have a lot of those like raisin prune fig low notes that I really, really like. Um, I'm just a big fan of it. So let's taste it. Here's to you, Golden Drock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you taste, uh, you taste the booze. You taste like that figgy sort of flavor. It is effervescent. It's, it's mostly, you know, it's very, very carbonated beverage as well. Mm-hmm. I like it. I really, really like it. Uh, this is one of my go-tos. It is expensive. Uh, the bigger bottles are around 15 bucks. I think these were $6.99 each, these little bottles like this and the Golden Drock. Um, well worth it. Uh, this is a beer that I like to just have uh, in the house 
to drink when I want beer. There's a couple of beers that I do that with. Uh, the Gulendrak is one of them. There's another one, Cali Creamin. I just, I really, really like it. It's like a, uh, uh, I can't think of the word. It's like a, a cream soda ale. It's uh, it's just really delicious. And this is one that I really, really like. And even though it is dark, um, it's got a nice little head on there. Some mild lacing, as it were. I'm not a beer professional guy, you know, like Ruby Ruiz. So she uses terms like effervescent and lacing, which I, uh, I'll be honest, I still don't 100% know what uh, what lacing is. I guess that's when it, uh, you know, sticks to the side of the glass right there. That's what I'm assuming. Anyway, it's very delicious. This is very much a dessert dinner uh, beer when you're having like a hearty meal of mushrooms and, and steak with sauce and potatoes and things like that. This is this is the beer. This is the beer that you should be drinking. Okay, so Golden Drock aside, which is delicious, I do want to do a couple of... Uh, of shout outs and I apologize I don't have my email pulled up right now but the first shout out I want to do actually doesn't have anything to do uh, with email okay Google loves making everything in my life difficult <clears throat> pardon me what's in the news Robin I open my email and then I have to pick my grim green email and then it has to load it's ridiculous uh, I don't know why Google hates me so much so uh, yes um, this is it. This is one a shout out that I meant to give like weeks ago, but it didn't quite happen. My local vape shop, uh, one of my local vape shops, Vader Vapor. Um, this girl, uh, Allie, she emailed me and says, hey, Nick, this is Allie from Vader Vapor. Uh, don't know if you remember me, but Ray, the Raynator on Instagram, if you need a refresher, uh, Last Saturday was his birthday, and I thought it'd be awesome if you gave him a shout out. Also, you are the best. Thank you. This was on May 14th. So on May 14th, last week was his birthday. So basically like a month ago was Ray's birthday. But Ray, happy birthday. Uh, I apologize that this took so long. Um, uh, Ali also runs the uh, hashtag at or at uh, Instagram at chicks underscore with underscore mods, which I'll post a link to in the description. And I'll post a link to the Rainator. It's kind of like his personal uh, Instagram. But uh, yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, they run a good shop. And uh, happy birthday to you. I apologize. And I apologize again, Ali. I apologize to her at least 15 times already. Um, uh, Amanda. Uh, so Amanda wrote to me um, and I wanted to give her a shout out. Uh, first of all, thank you for what you do. I've been vaping for over a year and a half now. Uh, I started working in a vape shop called Liquid Edge about a month ago. We primarily focus on our own juice line, but I have been trying to up my game on everything else mod wise. I've been watching your videos lately and has helped me learn a lot about vaping and advocacy. Uh, I thought I'd share something that was really cool. My wife recently got her 90 I repeat, 90-year-old grandmother to start vaping. She would go through the carton of lights in two weeks. That is a lot of cigarettes. Uh, we took a video of her the other day vaping on her Atlantis right after we went to my shop and got her an ego setup, and she is enjoying it and already cutting back on the cigarettes. I just thought this was a cool story, and I thought you would appreciate it. I don't care if you tell the story. Uh, awesome. Awesome. 90 years old, no time like the present to uh, to start vaping and not using traditional tobacco cigarettes. Uh, going through a carton in two weeks, that's a, that's a lot. That's more than a pack a day smoker right there. That's a lot of cigarettes. Um, but yeah, she got uh, an Atlanta. She got an Ego and an Atlanta set up and uh, she's rocking it. So awesome. Amanda, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that with me. Um, I do have uh, two more shout outs to do. James Jonathan from Facebook uh, messages me and says, Hello, my name is John from Louisville, Kentucky. I was hoping you could shout out someone for me. His name is Cody and he works at 723 out here. Hey, his name is Cody and he works at 723 out here. I came to have an Addy drilled out on my cheap clone. Uh, I, okay, this sometimes people's uh, phrasing and the way that they write is a little bit confusing. Let me uh, let me refresh myself here. Mm -hmm. Oh, you golden drock. So, I came in to have my Addy drilled out and my cheap clone mod died on me. He went out of his way to help me out and got me to step away from cigarettes as of 521. Congratulations to you. 
by the time your next vlog comes out, I will have not, I have will have been done smoking cigarettes for over a week. Uh, I have no doubt I can do this, and it's all because of Cody. Please shout him out. He doesn't realize it, but the little bit he did means the world to someone who would have been lost without it. Absolutely. Uh, James, you should be shouted out too for congratulations on your week away from cigarettes. And Cody, it sounds like you're doing everything right. There's one thing I really love is helpful people in vape shops. Vape shops need to remember that they are a business and they are there to help customers. Um, there's been a lot of times, unfortunately, when I've gone into vape shops and I've seen just like, it's like a motorcycle club. People just sitting around a table vaping and building shit and laughing and then a customer comes in and nobody helps them and then they wander around and look at stuff and nobody helps them and they leave and I go what are you doing why 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 would you ignore someone like that anyway uh, so congratulations James and absolutely Cody consider yourself shouted out so I do have one a last shout out that I want to do so this one this one is a little bit heartwarming and it has a product uh, that goes along with it uh, hooligan box mods. So the dude makes, uh, the dude named Sean makes a box mod and it's a Hammond box, but he has Grim Army on there by Sean Hooligan. And it's a Hammond box, uh, parallel, unregulated, Fat Daddy 510, you know, typical, very sort of not run of the mill, but run of the mill, ugh, pardon me, box mod. It's great. It's, I've actually been rocking it with this Mutation X version 4, and I've, and I've really, really been enjoying it. Anyway, this is long, so I'm not going to read... Uh, I'm not going to read everything. Nick, thank you for all you have done for me uh, and the questions you have taken the time to answer. Because of you, uh, my life has changed completely. Three years smoke-free now, and I don't even look back. You talked me into the K-Fun version four years ago, and that's what changed the game for me. K-Fun version two, that was a good one. Um, I'm assuming he means the K-Fun light. Uh, a little about myself. I'm a single dad. My daughter is nine years old. Um, there was some sadness that happened in their life. Uh, anyway... Um, it, he he, get, he shares a little bit about his life that I don't think he necessarily wants on there, but he does have a nine-year-old uh, a nine-year-old daughter. Um, uh, so uh, he started building box mods as a hobby, and at that time, thankfully, it took off into a home-based business. Uh, I now have saved my home uh, from foreclosure. Carly, his his daughter, has become an a uh, an honor roll student in her class and I can be there for her 24-7. I feel like I owe you a lot for all your help. You don't, you don't owe me anything. There's a special mod for you uh, and a thank you, uh, and I hope to see a review from you. My mod is becoming a household name, and I would love to see it grow. Thanks again, Sean Hooligan. And then he gives me some, uh, some uh, info about the mod. Hooligan V4 Mech. It's a Hammond box. Heavy duty swish. It's MOSFET protected. Parallel 18650 18 gauge solid core wire. And what I like about it the most is on the outside, yeah, it's a Hammond box with a 510. We all have mods like this. I have at least five mods like this. But one thing that I really, really like about it, pardon me, uh, is on the inside he has a custom 3D printed sled for the batteries. You see how that is a really, really super clean in there? Like that is all custom 3D printed sled in there. And you can pop the batteries out if you want. And you can see that he has them labeled in there. Positive side up, negative side down, positive side up, negative side down. And these just uh, go in there and they pop in there and they stay in there. And I think that's really, really cool. If I was going to offer some uh, room for improvement in your mod, Sir Hooligan, uh, it would be the door. The door has a lot of play, up and down, side to side, and it pops off very, very easily. It takes almost no effort to just, it just pops open just like that, and it's a Hammond box. But I like that 3D printed sled. I do like that it says Grim Army on it. And it's weird because he put his 510 connection in an odd place. It doesn't hang over the door. It hangs over the back. When you're looking at it, it just looks a little bit uh, 
a little bit odd. Um, he also makes parallel 26650s, series 18650s, and triple 18650s, and a Hooligan Mini 18650 mod, uh, parallel 18650, DNA 30, DNA 40, SX350, and all mods uh, come with a warranty. Uh, Sean Hooligan, Facebook Sean Hooligan Johnson, and uh, yeah, so I'll try to I'll try to track down his. Uh, his link and information if you're interested in supporting this guy. He seems like a really good guy. And this is the part that really tugged at my heartstrings. Uh, his daughter, Carly Johnson. Um, his, his daughter drew this. <laughs> I mean, that is... Uh, that looks like a, a little nine-year-old daughter drew my, uh, my Grim Army logo. And it says, To Grim Green from Carly. Uh, me and my daddy, Sean, watch all of your videos. I like the fact that you helped my daddy to stop smoking. Look at that. Grim green rocks. You can't make this stuff up. You really can't. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Carly. Thank you for the mod. Thank you for the picture. Uh, this is just a heartwarming... <laughs> this is just a heartwarming little thing. Uh, I, I want to... I want to I want to digitize this and put it on a shirt and make uh, the Carly special Grim Army t-shirts. Um, I think she captured it very well overall. I mean it looks from a glancing at it it does look like the Grim Army logo. Um, Grim Green Rocks right there. It's in writing. So, I mean that's true. These are true facts. Um, thank you very thank you thank you uh, so much Carly. Thank you so much John. Obviously, I'm glad to help out, and no, you don't owe me anything, but thank you very much for the mod. So, we've done shout-outs, we did a little bit of advocacy, we talked about Mitch Zeller, we drank some beer, and so what I want to do right now is some, uh, some first impressions. Yeah, I've got, I've got a lot of stuff, and it seems like I've just been getting bombarded lately with mech mods and atomizers. Not a lot of regulated stuff, but a lot of mech mods. And, you know, there's the continuing argument, oh, are mech mods here? Are they going away? Well, I think mech mods are obsolete. And then there's other people who use nothing but mech tube mods. But regardless of what anybody thinks, I'm going to have a lot of mech mod videos coming up here. So one of the first mech mods that I want to talk about here on the first impressions is comes from Unique Vapor Innovations. Now they sent me the uh, Ray. If anybody remembers that Ray mod that I did a first impressions on not too long ago, they sent me the Ray. And this is their mech mod called the Bam Bam. It's called the Bam Bam. And it's a tube mod. And you can't see it. Can you hear it? It's got like this record sort of texture on here. Uh, I hate the engraving on it. I hate touching it. It's worse than a chalkboard. But it does have that sort of, uh, you know, Tendo style uh, locking feature, meaning you just twist this base and it locks and unlocks depending on where you're twisting it. And there's actually little symbols, like right now it's showing unlocked and then the next one over would be locked. Um, it's kind of weird because even if it's locked or unlocked, you can still press the button. And when you set it down, it wobbles on the button because the button sticks out so far. And it's a very, very soft spring. So I'm going to unlock this right now. And it's a single 18650, and there's nothing to adjust. And that's what I enjoy about this mech mod. There's no top double pin in it. There's a pin that's floating, and then on the bottom is this spring-loaded copper connection. And that's all you do to take up your battery rattle, is you just screw it together. That's it. I don't even mind that it makes the mod a little bit longer. I love not having to adjust anything. So let me make sure this is unlocked. I'm actually currently rocking this with the Aqua. This is the Aqua SE. Yeah, the Aqua SE. This came to me from Gaslight uh, Vapor Company. And I don't know if I've talked about this in a vlog yet or not. Have I? Have I talked about this? This is the Aqua SE by Futoon. Um, I built this to around 0.2 ohms as I usually do. Uh, it's wonky. It's really, really wonky. Uh, the deck is weird. The way you fill it is weird. The way that you adjust the airflow is weird. Um, but so far on this mech mod, it's been, uh, it's been really, really nice. 
Really good flavor on this. So yeah, I'm interested to spend not only more time with this mech bod, but what juice is that? What juice is in here? I have no idea what juice is in here. Is that slam cake? There's some juice in here that's delightful. It's just really good. Why did it... Oh, that was really bizarre. So the Bam Bam stopped firing there for a second. It just... It's like stopped for a second. That's really bizarre. It just did it again. I felt it in my mouth hole. Not firing. I didn't even press the button any harder or anything. Okay, weird. Weird. It seems like every other time I press the button, it doesn't fire. Like I said, this is why we do first impressions. I'm going to fiddle with it. This is exactly how I evaluate things. I see what's happening. I see how it fires, how it works, this, that, and the other. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to spend some more time there with the Bam Bam. I do have another mech mod here as well from uh, from Chillum. <laughs> I believe it's pronounced Chillum. Uh, I can never... I can never pronounce anything right, but I know for sure this is called the Tantra mod, and this comes to me from chillum.la, and I'll post a link in the description to where you can pick one up, or a look into it if you're so interested. Obviously, this isn't a full review now, but it's a mech mod. Yo, oh, there's my alarm. Son of a bitch. I know, I know, because eating. I know I need to eat. So this comes from Chillum. This is the Tantra mod. This is a mech mod. And it's got really just a hair trigger on the bottom, um, which is a good thing it locks. It locks with like one twist of that, and now it's locked, and then one twist of it up, and now it's unlocked. It's got, oh my god, it's got just a hair trigger on it. I am currently rocking this uh, with the dot mod, uh, the Petri atomizer. Oh my gosh, the, the, tr the hair trigger on this is ridiculous. In fact, I need to... Uh, fix this cotton a little bit in here. My cotton game is not on point right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, nope, that's not the right juice. This is a top secret juice that I can't tell you about. Other than, I'll give you a hint, we're trying to not make it taste like a Halloween mask. Anybody? Anybody? Any thoughts? I think this mod looks cool with this dot mod Petri on there. It seems to be 22 millimeters around, but there feels like there's a little... It's like, if it's 22, it's not 23. It's like, see, it just fired in my fucking hand. It's like 22 and like just a hair a bit more. I can feel the edge of it right there. Um, hair trigger. Hair trigger. really really nice it's a hard this is a hard hitting mod and i don't generally jump on the like it hits like a you know a freight train duct tape to the space shuttle flying into a supernova it's hitting hard it's hitting nice and hard and it's got a hair trigger like i barely have to rest my finger on there to get it to fire Anyway, you have to. I have to be sure to lock this every single time. Um, that's the Tantra mod, which is kind of an expensive mod, but like all my first impressions, I'll be reporting back later on uh, with how well it works. So we did. We've done the Snow Wolf already. We did the Bam Bam. That Tantra mod talked a little bit about the Aqua. So the only thing that's weird about the Aqua that I've noticed so far, and I may have already discussed this. The way you adjust the airflow is by screwing the whole tank up or down. So do you see how this is down right now and there's no gap? If you unscrew this, you start to see a little bit of a gap there. And now, that's where all your airflow is coming in. And when it's screwed up like this, it's a little bit wobbly. It's just a touch wobbly on the base. Just a touch wobbly. Otherwise. The way that you fill it up is sort of brilliant. You screw this all the way down, and then you unscrew this drip tip part. 
you have a nice big opening there for putting your juice in. I don't know exactly what juice this is, so I'm just going to throw this slam cake in here. I think it is slam cake. So I'm going to fill this up. I'm going to top it off just like that. And when this screws on, it's, you can see it's like surrounded by an O-ring. So that's what seals the top. So I'm going to put this in, screw that down all the way. And then I'm going to open back up that airflow just like that. And now I have a, well, now I have a basically full tank on a mod that's not firing. It's quite, quite delicious. Um, we talked about that. This isn't going to be a very long first impressions. There's one last thing I wanted to talk about before we get, before we move on to anything else. I got this new mech mod from, uh, oh, I have an atomizer too that I want to talk about that I hate. Let's get there first. Uh, I don't hate it, okay? Let's just preface this by saying I don't hate this atomizer. This atomizer came from Vape Affliction. I'm going to put it on my little BAM stand right now so you can kind of see it a little bit better. I'm going to have to zoom in on this because it's going to be a thing that needs to be, uh, well, it needs to be zoomed in upon. I'm going to zoom in. Do you see this deck? Now that is a crazy looking deck. So here's the problem that I ran into the two times I've tried to build this. I want to put a quad coil in there. Each chamber can fit a coil, and it looks like it's really, really easy. Here's the problem that I run into. I got my coils in there, and I'm screwing these screws down, and I'm tightening them, and I go, oh, that's snug. And then I'm taking the bottom one, and I go, oh, that's really snug too. And then what ends up happening is these screws are too far out. If you screw them in farther, they will clip your leads. And if you leave them out too far, what they will do is touch the side of this top cap and short. Uh, I hard shorted a 18650 because of this atomizer. I built a quad coil in there, wicked it, juiced it, was firing it like crazy. I'm like, this is awesome. I popped the cap on there, didn't really notice any resistance. I popped the cap on there. I went to fire it. I saw some sparking coming out of this airflow hole. My mod got really, really warm, so I popped the battery out of it, and the battery was just smoldering hot. It wasn't smoking or anything, but it was smoldering hot. And needless to say, I didn't use that battery anymore. So I was trying to figure out what it was, and I decided, yes, these screws on the round the whole round the whole deck. If you don't screw them in far enough, they're going to touch the side of the top cap, they're going to ground out, and they're going to hard short your battery. So I gave it another whirl. Put a brand new build in there, and the first coil that I put in here, I screwed these in as far as they would go, make, making sure that they cleared the edge of the atomizer. See this? I had to screw them in all the way. The problem is these screws are flat. I tried it with 26 gauge Canthal, 24 gauge Anarchist, and 26 gauge Anarchist, and every time the screws clipped my leads and my coils just fell out. I don't know what to do. I am going to try this with 24 gauge Canthal hoping that it will be a little bit stronger and that I can really crank down those screws because you need to crank down the screws far enough so that it doesn't uh, come in contact with the top cap. Obviously this is a very wide 26650 sized atomizer and what I do actually really like about this top cap is it's designed to fit chuffs in there. The chuff actually goes inside of that top cap. This one has a stormtrooper on it um, not all chuffs fit, but most chuffs fit. This one from District 5, that apple bottom one, fits in there really, really well. Additionally, this other one from District 5 that's uh, aluminum that says Fuji on it. Um, well, it has a bit of a dry O-ring, so I'm going to spit on it. <laughs> oh, gosh. This one just fit in here. Yeah, there it goes. That one fits in there. Uh it's pretty cool. Uh, funnily enough, funnily, sure, uh, the authentic chuffs uh, do, not, uh, do not fit in there. So 
that atomizer we're setting aside for now. I'm going to try and rebuild it later. So I got this mech mod from Beyond Vape. So this is a Beyond Vape Aria built uh, ritual machine collaboration mod. And it's called the Aria Z. And I just got it. It has the ritual machine logo on the bottom. And I got it and I'm thinking this is a copper zombie. This is a copper zombie mech mod. And so I got out my zombie mech mod. And yes, they are replicas of each other. Um, same top cap. Uh, same graphics on the bottom. Same locking feature. Same battery rattle adjustment feature, which is actually really, really good. You, you, you're not going to be able to see this. Shit. I hate doing the zoomy up thing. So here's the bottom cap. And you... It's a lot like the Nemesis. You turn this, and that comes up. See how that came up? And you turn this, and it goes back down. It's really easy to adjust for battery rattle with this. You put an atomizer on here, you screw it down, and then you tighten the switch until it's snug, and then boom, you're good to go. The only difference I can find, obviously, other than this one is made out of copper, and this one is made out of stainless steel, is the fact that the button on the original stainless steel zombie mech mod is so glidy, buttery smooth, it's almost ridiculous. This one... is crunchy. I expected more from you, Ritual Machine. I really like the zombie, and I really like Ritual Machine as a company because this mod is great. I, I want to break it out again and start using it. The button is just a delight to use. It's fantastic. And so when I saw this and I was like, that is a copper version of the zombie. Awesome. I'm sure I'll like it. And then I started crunching this button down. Can you hear that? It is crunchy. Whereas this one, silent. Just silent glidiness. This one, crunchiness. Disappointed. Disappointed. I'm hoping that that crunchiness will work itself out. Um, but as it stands, the Aria Z is basically a copper version of the zombie with a crunchy button and I don't like that it's a crunchy button and it upsets me that it's a crunchy button what I'm gonna try to do is go in here maybe clean it um, I'm gonna see what I can do I know that copper tends to you know uh, get cruddy and gunky and tarnished and so I'm hoping that it's just simply an issue with some crud being in there and then I'll be able to clean it out but as it stands I can't I can't use it I can't bring myself to use it zombie on the other hand oh my gosh it's just it's just beautiful so yeah we're gonna call it good on the first impressions there I do have some other stuff I want to talk about but we can probably get into that next week mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we can probably get into that next week if everybody wants to uh just wait till next week i got these weird tanks i got these weird ass tanks from epoch uh they're fucking weird this one's supposed to be like a big dripper style uh this one is kind of like an orchid style but it's got this weird adjustable juice flow system that doesn't uh, that doesn't work. Uh, they're weird. These are weird fucking tanks. I don't even want to review them, um, but I'll have to talk about them sooner or later. So yeah, now that we got all that out of the way, I believe right now it's time for some retro vaping. <laughs> Okay, I apologize. Before we get to the retro vaping, there's one last thing I wanted to talk about. Now, this is the Vantra. So what this is, is it's basically a layer of safety for your mech mods. It makes it, eh, what's that? Inch, half an inch longer. But what the Vantra, Vantra does, is I'm going to post a link in the description as well. The Vantra 
prevents auto fire Prevent auto fire with the Vantra. Connects to any mod and atomizer with 510 threading. Simply attach your atomizer to the Vantra, then the Vantra to your mod. On a mechanical mod, the Vantra shuts the atomizer off and flashes the lights after eight seconds. It also lets you know if you've installed your battery backwards. It can also install onto your box circuit mod as bling. <laughs> Lights come in red or blue and look really cool. 22 millimeter diameter, virtually no power drop, works on builds uh, 0 0.1 point, what am I doing? 0 0.1 ohms and up. Check out Grim's Green's review of the Vantra here. So I've talked about this before and I'm just gonna, you know what, let's put it on this. Let's put it on the, uh, let's put it on the zombie because I haven't used the zombie in a mile. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this Vantra to the zombie. And the Vantra does have a protruding 510 pin, which is really the only reason why I would use this on a, uh, on a hybrid mod. And then we're going to plug that on here, just like that. And then we're going to take our, uh, our aqua that is leaking juice everywhere and we're gonna plug that onto the Vantra. So the idea is that when I press this button, the Vantra should light up. The Vantra will light up green and it will just bypass completely and power will go straight to the atomizer. Works as advertised. That's the Vantra right there. You see it lighting up. Um, it'll tell you if you have your battery in upside down. And most importantly, what it does is it prevents uh, it prevents your mod from auto firing. It actually stops after eight seconds and stops the circuit and prevents your battery from from over uh, you know over. Uh, God damn it! Why can't I talk today? over draining I, why can't I think of the goddamn word there's nothing more frustrating than that basically it acts like an auto fire stop for your mech mods so finally kicked in after 8 seconds and if this was you know getting held down somehow in a bag or a purse it would stop firing it would stop your atomizer from firing it would keep your battery from draining too quickly preventing that short preventing that uh possible uh you know um catastrophic battery failure that's what this does now the Vantra works exactly as advertised but it's a pricey product it's 75 freaking dollars for this i think it's a wonderful product still going still holding this down and as soon as I let go it'll let me fire it again it's just a pricey product and I wish they would come down on the price on these because I would like to see maybe a lot more people who are using mech mods actually use those uh, to prevent themselves you know to add a little level of safety in there so moving forward from that Vontra I'll have a link in the description um, Retro vaping. So let's retro vape. Let's retro vape. Um, once upon a time, there was a vendor called Inhaler. Rest in peace, Drew. Drew passed away this last year. Um, he sold a mod called the Exhaler. There was the version one of the Exhaler, and then there was the Exhaler that came with a kick. And in between there, there was the Exhaler Mini. And as you can see, I customized mine with a Grim Army sticker on there ages ago, ages and ages ago. But this was a mech mod. And uh, there was a lot of drama around this device. Uh, Drew thought that you could uh, adjust the voltage using the Delrin cap, and of course that turned out to just not be true at all. Um, but look at the look at look at the mechanics of this on the inside, and I just want you to get an idea of how actually dangerous this mod got from time to time. Um, all his mods were wrapped in a sticker, and I rewrapped mine in a Grim Army sticker. 
but they were all wrapped in some sort of sticker, whether that was like, you know, rainbowy colors, blue, pink, red, all the colors of the rainbow, because the way this switch works, are you seeing that? You seeing that switch right there? See, so you'll see the plunger come down and it touches the housing of the device. So, with all that cherry bomber talk that's been going on about how it auto fires because the body of the device is the ground, that's not new. The body of this device was also the ground. And if you peeled this sticker off here and you touch the atomizer and the body with a key or something, yes, shorts. I would just fire like crazy. So they came wrapped in a sticker. I wrapped it in my own sticker, but they came wrapped in stickers. Um, I'm not sure if this is even going to work anymore, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. I don't know if I even have a battery that's going to fit in here anymore. I had a 16340 battery. Where did you go? Where did you go, 16340 battery? Son of a bitch. Uh, hang on a second. Let me look for my 16340 battery. I know it's around here somewhere. Hang on. Hang on. We're going to try to vape this. <laughs> Success. I knew I had a 16340 battery. I just knew it. Look at this. Look at this little tiny little battery. Just as a size comparison. Here's an uh, 18350. And of course, the 350 is the length of it. Look at it's even narrower than a little 18350 battery. This is a 16340 battery, and it runs on a single 16340 battery. That is ridiculous. But there's a little spring in here. Spring, spring, spring. So I'm gonna put this Delrin base back on. Delrin base goes back on. And then what I think is interesting as well is this had a floating 510. Look at that. Innovation floating 510. That's what we use in a lot of mech mods now. So I'm going to screw this on here. I'm going to grab my little 901 atomizer and I'm going to screw it on here. Now, now comes the test. This is how we vaped it. That's a little 901. This is a little inhaler mini 16340 on the inside. Let's see if it vapes. I just heard it vape. Oh my God, it works. It works better than that protege I did last week. Are you seeing these clouds, bro? unbelievable it's firing perfectly <laughs> perfectly um yeah that was it i don't even think he sells i don't even he poor drew poor drew's not around anymore but uh i would love to see if inhaler still sells the inhaler mini yes uh store welcome to the inhaler store yeah, Opus D, Exhale Liquid, Spire CF sub ohm batteries. This used to be my go to. Uh, the website is still mid sized to big battery starter kits. No, it's not in there. I'll see if it's Exhaler. Uh, the Exhaler. <gasps> the Exhaler. He still sells it. I mean, they still sell it. The XL exhaler, the exhaler. Okay, well, you can't get the exhaler mini, but you can get the exhaler still. And I'll post a link in the description, and you can see all the different uh, stickers that they used to put on there. And, you know, inhaler always had a weird a weird system on their devices and mods. It says, please note, a silencer can be added under the add a silencer option below for $5 off the original price. Exhaler color. Okay, so you can get it in black sparkle. You wanna add an adapter, that's seven bucks. The adapter is gonna be 510 to 4081 because that still exists. 
no silencer, 87 bucks. These have been the same price the entire time. Um, <laughs> Inhaler.com still sells the exhaler. I'll post a link in the description to my original exhaler mini video. I think I had the number nine. I think I had it in bright pink. They come with a different button now and different 510 connections, this, that, and the other, but they still, uh, it's still a thing. The exhaler is still a freaking thing. That is crazy. I didn't realize it was still a thing. The XL exhaler. The XL exhaler is the most advanced technology and the most advanced personal vaporizer on the market. This mod is intended for use with an 18650 battery and a kick for extended battery life. Might be time to uh, might be time to update the website there, guys. One, two, three, four, five. But yeah, I uh, I got one of these exhalers. I loved it like crazy. It was a nice little stealthy vape. This is with a 901, uh, and it only came with a 901. You couldn't get any other option. It was 901, and that's it. That was your option. You could put a little adapter on there for a 510, and then put a 510, and then have this big long thing on top of your mod. Look at that. Look at this tiny little mod. That is ridiculous, but still works better than the Pure Smoker Protégé from last week. I just got juice in my mouth. That's why I love the 901 atomizers, because all you do is get juice in your mouth. Um, yeah, I mean, Inhaler was a great company. Uh, Drew was a great guy. He was one of the founders of CASA, uh, that, you know, the CASA that we know today. He was one of the founders of it. So... Head over there, check it out. It's actually pretty funny. I mean, obviously, you don't have to buy an inhaler or an exhaler, but uh, it's interesting. It's very strange going back to this inhaler site because I used to come here a lot. I loved their juices. I loved the tobacco. He had, like, the octane tobacco juices that I really, really loved. I would buy bulk atomizers from him. I would buy blank KR808D batteries from him. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. So yeah, um, this is way too long. This is way too long. Um, let's uh, let's wrap up this retro vaping. Let's try. Look at this. Let me just let me just take a couple more toots on this little thing. Oh yeah. Clouds, bro. Just clouds, bro, for days. Um, let's try to wrap this up. Let's get to some viewer mail. View. Viewer mail. <clears throat> okay, so I would like to get through at least a couple viewer mails before I announce the uh, winner of the giveaway. Uh, Ralph. Ralph writes to me and says, Hey, Nick, thanks for everything you do for the vape community. Your website and videos are fantastic. Huge fan of you and Mr. Bissardo. Looking to get another regulated mod, I currently use the Flask version 2, and I'm a diehard user of mechanical mods, uh, but I would like to either purchase the SX Mini M Class or the IPV version 4. Uh, I know they're both real, new to the market, just wondering uh, which one you would buy if you had to choose one. So here's the problem. I don't have the SX Mini. Uh, I just don't have one. Um, funny story about that is they sent an SX Mini to a Grim Green imposter. Believe it or not, this is a thing that happens. People will generate an email account like Grim Green Vapor Guy at yahoo.com. They'll email a bunch of vendors and try to get a bunch of free stuff, and the vendors don't double check anything and will send them products. So some guy made off with two SX Mini M Class devices uh, using my name, and I they contacted me and they were wondering about a review and I said, I never got any products from you. This is the first time we've spoken and they said, no, no, we sent you two SX Mini M classes and I said, no, no, you didn't. You may have sent them to somebody else pretending to me be, but you did not send them to me. All of my correspondence, everything I've ever done comes from an at grimgreen.com email address. If it's not coming from an at grimgreen.com email address, it's not me. I really like the IPV version 4. Um, <laughs> Matt was going to dump some juice in his just to test it out. Uh, there are some safety things with the IPV version 4, but 
I really like the IPv version 4. With that said, I really, really want to try the SX Mini M class. Um, I still never got one, and I don't think I'll ever get one. I got to fiddle around with masts <laughs> at uh, Vapor Slam. I know he has one. They're really, really nice. Um, the screen on it is super complicated. There's just a whole lot of stuff going on. Honestly, I would just use your vape budget hands. I am a fan of the IPv version 4. I think it's... Uh, I think it's cool, I think it looks good, I think it works great. I think the SX Mini is a little bit nicer all around on the fit and finish, a little bit nicer all around in the display, a little bit nicer all around overall. So, uh, you know, if you're into temperature control, um, they both do temperature control. I don't know, I would kind of go with the SX Mini even though I don't have one. Knowing what I know about the IPv4 version 4 and the little time I spent with the SX Mini, I kind of want an SX Mini instead of the IPv version 4. But uh, but that's what I got for you, Ralph. Um, Brian. Brian, okay, this is a long one. Brian writes off to me and says, Hey, how are you? Been a big fan for four months, smoke-free, really new to the vaping world. Uh, a lot of great people I've met in my area through vaping. So I started off, okay, everybody who writes to me is the same. It's like they have a... <laughs> <laughs> it's like they have a template that they use. Um, let's see what, let's get to his question. Um, okay, so I started off using a V2 e cig, which got me to quit smoking. I've def moved on to better things. I'm currently using an e leaf iStick 50 watt and loving it. Battery life is great. I took your advice and will not put the charger on while asleep. Okay, so I've been using tanks, and after much review, I decided it's time for an RDA. I'm great with my hands, so coil building looked fun and like a challenge. So I two different RDAs, one's the Kennedy and the other's the Freak Show. So both RDAs, I've built 24 gauge Canthal and the coils look great. Pulsing them and glowing from the inside out every time. So why does it seem to taste, so why does it seem like they taste burnt? Now I'm using them on the iStick 50 watt. I don't have much funds for Mac mod right now, vape budget, lol. Using Japanese cotton now, haven't boiled it, but the shop that I get it says it's cool to use without. IDK, really wanna experience the great flavor that I'm hearing about. Am I doing something wrong? Maybe I shouldn't be using an RDA on the iStick? No, that's not the problem. The problem's not the iStick. Sorry for rambling on. Thank you again for all you do. Hopefully one day my vape collection will get bigger. Single dad raising my little one alone ain't cheap, but in the meantime, I'll definitely keep watching your videos. So basically his question was, why does he get a burnt taste uh, from his Kennedy and Freak Show? He's using 24 gauge Canthal. The coils look great, pulsing them and glowing from the inside out every time. So why does it seem like the taste burnt? Uh, there could be a lot going in on there. If you're not using enough cotton, they will taste burnt. Additionally, there could actually be hot spots in there that you're not seeing. Um, there's been plenty, plenty of times where I've built a coil and I've built them just majestically beautifully and I pulse them and they glow from the inside out and they just look amazing and then I get cotton in there and then I get juice on there and I watch it fire and you can see one of the wraps just go red right away. It's just something that happens. Um, juice it, wick it, and juice it. Use a, use a bunch of cotton. You need to get the cotton so it's, you need to pull it through so it's nice and packed in there. This is just what I do, this is not what everybody does. So it's nice and packed in there. I like to fill the coil with a lot of cotton um, just so it's nice and packed in there so you don't get any hot spots. Juice it, and then fire it, hold it, and blow like this. <laughs> Allow me to uh, lead by example. All you want to see is vapor happening. If you see any hot spots happening while that's going on, bad. That's why you're getting a burnt taste. Uh, I can only assume it's from a hot spot or you're just not, uh, you're just simply not using enough cotton in there, Brian. So I got two viewer mails out of the way. Let's, uh, I don't think I have any more. Okay, that's a long one. People love to send me really, really long emails. That's the beauty, uh, no, let's not do that one. <sighs> let's not do that one. Let's not do that one, okay. Um, 
Okay, so let's get on to the giveaway. Enough of this nonsense. We did some viewer mail, let's actually get to the giveaway. So the giveaway I did, which I have the box sitting right here, it's ready to go out and be delivered. Um, there were, let's see how many entries, uh, 616 entries. 616 entries. That's a lot of entries into a giveaway. So what I am going to be doing uh, starting probably next week, I might make it like a Tuesday or Wednesday thing, is uh, posting people's stories on Instagram. Um, a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people entered. Everybody from uh, 41-year-old Randall from North Carolina to 18-year-old uh, Jake from Texas to, uh, let's see, James is 22. He's from Illinois. Uh, Tony, Tony is 68 from Texas. Look at this guy. Look at Tony. You're a good looking man, Sir Tony from Texas. 68 years old. Uh, he smoked one and a half packs a day. He's been a month. He's been a, uh, he's been a, a vapor for five months. He likes uh, pastry and fruit flavors. A lot. There was a lot. There was a lot of entries. And so what I did is right now, as of right now, this contest is stopped. So what I'm going to do is random.org myself some uh, a winner. Random.org. Yep. Uh, how many were there? How many were there? 616 entries. Okay, whoever's number 211, you are the winner. So I know there's, it's easy to do this with email because I know that there's 50 emails on each page because that's what Gmail tells me. So if I go through one through 50, now this is 51 through 100. Now this is 100 through 150. This is 150 through 200. So that means on the next page, no, okay, I'm, I apologize. That did not, that did not go uh, as I had planned. Um, that did not go as I had planned. So now I'm going to have to like actually count. Okay, this is going to take a second. Give me one second. To, give me one second to count to 211. 1, 2, 11. Christopher, Mr. Christopher, congratulations. I will email you uh, on Friday, actually. I'm not gonna email you today because I want whoever is watching this to feel the excitement of seeing who the winner is. Christopher Meary, you're 32 years old. You are from Arizona, currently deployed in Kuwait. Uh, he's been vaping for a year and three months. He was a pack-a-day smoker for over 17 years. My favorite vaping flavors are fruits and lemonades. Man after my own heart. Well, thank you, Christopher, for entering. Thank you for your service. Um, I will email you. I will get your information, and I will ship you this package. And again, a huge shout-out thank you to everybody. I mean, just everybody involved in this giveaway. I got 600-plus uh testimonies now basically people uh like this uh i'd like to nominate my mom rita oh no this is a this is an old one sorry i apologize like uh let's pick a random one here let's pick a random one uh chad chad's 38 from new year uh from new york he vapes he's been vaping for four years he smoked three packs a week for 20 plus years he likes dessert and fruit flavors so these are going to make great you know put a face on vaping uh things so thank you so much everybody for entering uh and especially where uh oh I, I lost him christopher thank you so much christopher you are the grand prize freaking winner arizona currently deployed in kuwait thank you uh thank you so much for your service actually and thank you so much for entering um that's fantastic that is fantastic god that feels good Someone's uh, someone's getting a whole box of stuff. So yeah, that's kind of what I got uh, for this vlog. I'm not going to do any music because the music has been weird. All of my music music moving forward has been just been like in the past. It's been a problem, and I have a feeling in the future it's going to be a problem. But um, 
Hanging in there with the three videos a week, Mac Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, Wildcard Wednesday. Got a lot of cool stuff and products coming up. Still fiddling with that, uh, the new Evic VT. We got the V Mods that deviate. You remember this thing? The deviate? You remember this? Yeah, I got a video for this. Hopefully coming up soon. This is one of those weird Chinese tanks as well. But that's been nice. That's been pretty good. Um, got a lot of interesting stuff coming up. Additionally, I'm going to be all over the place for vape meets this year. Um, I just realized we're doing the Vapor Dynasty Expo in Arizona later this year. I'd still love to get to uh, the original VaporCon East out in uh, in Richmond, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But again, thank you so much, everybody, for the support. Uh, it's been overwhelming, and I'm hoping to get through this summer uh, with some semblance of sanity left. I have a feeling that things will be much better after VaporCon West, um, but the months leading up to VaporCon West have been uh, just incredibly stressful. I've just been... Uh, I've just been I've just been in a weird mood and a weird place, but uh, thank you, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Um, I'll see you next week. Ne ne I'll see you next week. I'll see you next week. Congratulations again to Christopher, and as always, everybody, what am I gonna grab? How about a fat snow wolf? Oh, except I have to wait for it to turn on, and then now it's locked. One, two, three, four, five. Let's keep on vaping.